Being a short guy myself, I've always had kind of a soft spot in my heart for Zacchaeus. Now, I never had to climb a tree in order to see an event or a game or a parade, but I did have to cope with taller people standing in front of me, uh, blocking my view and having to, uh, you know, pull on sleeves and whatever just to be able to get closer to the front so I could see. I especially remember uh, as a child lining up for First Communion and Confirmation, and uh, I'm not sure if they still do that by height, but they did when I was a kid, and I can remember every, each time praying and praying and praying, Dear Lord, please don't let me be first. Don't let me be first. I can deal with third or fourth, but don't let me be first. My first impulse then would be to think that Zacchaeus became a tax collector just to get back at those people who ridiculed him for his short stature. But we certainly don't know if that's the case. And we, it certainly doesn't justify his lack of compassion for his fellow Jews. Besides, today's scriptures are really about more than short guy makes good. Today we see that our Lord is truly a lover of souls. As we sang in our psalm today, God is slow to anger and compassionate towards all that God has made. In our first reading from the Book of Wisdom, God overlooks our sins and ignorance in his mercy. God gives us space so that we might repent and not perish in our sins. And in Jesus, God has become the savior of his children, coming himself to seek and to save the lost. And in the person of Zacchaeus, in today's gospel, we certainly have the portrait of a lost soul, don't we? He's a tax collector. He is by profession a sinner who is excluded from Israel's religious life. Not only that, he is a chief tax collector, which means he manages the activity in his region, becoming rich through fraud, participating willingly in the oppression of his own people by the Romans. But today, it's Zacchaeus' faith that brings salvation to his house. He expresses that faith in his fervent desire to see Jesus, even humbling himself by climbing a tree and just to watch him pass by. And he doesn't even intend to speak to him. He just wants to see him and see who he is. And while these, those of loftier religious stature react to Jesus with, with grumbling when he says to Zacchaeus, I'm going to come to your house today, uh, the sinful tax collector receives him with joy. Zacchaeus is not like the other rich men that we see Jesus meeting in the Gospels or telling stories about. He repents, vowing to pay restitution to those he has cheated and to give half of his money to the poor. His claims of what he will do show how radical his change of heart really is. By his humility, he is really exalted, and he is made worthy to welcome the Lord into his house. By his faith, he is justified and made a descendant of Abraham once again. Remember the kinds of scandal that Jesus caused in his public ministry, how he would turn things upside down. He says that now Zacchaeus is truly a son of Abraham once again. Jesus invites himself into the home of a public sinner, and a notorious one at that. As he did last week in, in the story of the tax collector um, and, and the Pharisee, uh, Jesus is again using a tax collector to show us the faith and humility we need to be saved by God. Uh, if, you, if you remember, the tax collector uh, in last week's gospel, after the Pharisee bragged about himself, just simply said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. As Pope Francis reminds us, no one is beyond the saving reach of God's mercy. After all, who were they to judge Zacchaeus? They weren't sinless, and neither are we. 
We are also called to seek Jesus daily with repentant hearts, and we should make our own St. Paul's prayer in today's second reading. We pray that God might make us worthy of his calling, that by our lives we might give glory to the name of Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. When we truly see Jesus as he is, our loving savior of our souls, we can never be the same, and Zacchaeus was changed forever. In the gospel, Luke has provided a context for us to understand all this. In his gospel, in the previous chapter, we saw that whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a little child will not enter it. Then we read about a rich official who was blinded by his wealth and finds himself unready to follow Jesus. Then Jesus heals a blind beggar who knows that he needs healing. And finally, in the story of Zacchaeus, we meet another kind of rich man. He is one who is sufficiently childlike to scamper up a tree to see who Jesus is. His openness to the truth makes him ready to be healed of his blindness. Blindness regarding his greed and his readiness to exploit others. This gospel account calls us all to seek the truth with a childlike openness. What can, what, so that we can be ready to encounter the Lord Jesus and respond to his surprising initiatives in his life. He might invite himself to dinner. He might invite himself into our hearts. <laughs>